the coronavirus escaped from a Chinese lab. New US cables explode on China. Was an unsafe Wuhan laboratory breeding the coronavirus? Is China covering up the truth? Not wet markets, but a viral laboratory? What does China have to hide? New biolab theory rocks the world. So all this while, the general belief has been that the coronavirus came because of the consumption of bats being sold in a wet market in Wuhan in China. And all through these few weeks, you've also seen a theory that's been lingering on the fringes of the debate that there could have been some kind of bio-weaponry theory. China may have done this deliberately. Well, it's nothing that drastic. But some new U.S. State Department cables are throwing a very glaring light on how China may be irresponsibly covering up the real truth of where the coronavirus came from. And it could be not from a wet market, but from a virology laboratory insecurely safeguarded in Wuhan. Did the novel coronavirus escape from a Chinese viral laboratory in Wuhan? You've probably heard this theory at least once since the outbreak began. Except now, the most powerful country in the world is officially investigating the possibility. A set of diplomatic cables accessed by US media paint a terrifying picture of an inadequately secured virology lab in Wuhan. The cables are talking about this facility, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, part of the Chinese government's larger Hubei Engineering and Technology Research Center for Viral Diseases. First, let's break down the explosive new developments in chronological order. After a visit to Wuhan in 2018, US science diplomats reported unsafe conditions at the Wuhan Virology Institute, deeming the bat research risky. Cut forward two years and the cables are providing glaring clues into what may have happened. So far, the most commonly held belief is that the Wuhan virus came from one of the city's wet markets, likely from the sale and consumption of bats. The viral lab escape theory has now gained credence though, with American experts sniffing a massive Chinese cover-up centered around the Wuhan lab. Well, sources are telling Fox News today that the United States government now has high confidence that while the coronavirus is a naturally occurring virus, it emanated from a virology lab in Wuhan, that because of lax safety protocols, an intern was infected, who later infected her boyfriend and then went to the wet market in Wuhan where it began to spread. Does that correspond with what you have heard from well, officials? Well, I don't want to say that, John, but I will tell you uh, more and more we're hearing the story. And we'll see. When you say multiple sources, now there's a case where you can use the word sources, but uh, we are doing a very thorough examination of this horrible situation that happened. This is a, uh, a laboratory that contained a highly contagious uh, materials. Uh, we knew that. We knew that they were working on this program. Many, many countries have programs like this. We're doing a, a full investigation of uh, everything we can to learn how it is the case that this virus got away, got out into the world, and now has created so much, so much tragedy, so much death here in the United States and all around the world, at an enormous cost to the global economy as yeah. well. According to U.S. media reports, the virus is believed to have jumped from a bat to a lab employee in Wuhan who later spread the virus across the city. The theory suggests China's ruthless competitiveness has driven it to research bat viruses without adequate safeguards and that the coronavirus may have been transmitted to a lab employee who then disseminated it to Wuhan's public. China's position with regard to the origin and transmission routes of the novel coronavirus is clear. It is a matter of science on which we should only rely on the findings of scientists and medical experts. I would like to remind you that the WHO has repeatedly stated that there is no evidence showing the virus was made in a lab. Many renowned medical specialists in the world have also debunked the lab leakage theory as it is not science-based at all.
there's a lot of uh, uh, rumor and speculation in a wide variety of uh, media, the blog sites, et cetera. Uh, it should be no surprise to you that we've taken a keen interest in that, uh, and we've had uh, a lot of intelligence uh, take a hard look at that. And I would just say at this point, it's inconclusive, uh, although the weight of evidence seems to indicate uh, natural. Uh, but we don't know for certain. The U.S. cables also cast a glare on Shi Zheng Li, a Chinese virologist nicknamed Batwoman for her bat-centric research and fieldwork. The cables say her work was conducted with inadequate protection. Xi's team was the first to reveal in February that the new outbreak was a bat-derived coronavirus. As the world battles COVID-19, the US cables have major implications for global safety and amplify the glaring question, is China lying about the very origin of the coronavirus? And more importantly, will we ever know? Bureau Report, here today. And this is only the latest in a spate of questions that highlight China's credibility crisis through the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to highlight just the three latest ones. China, remember, has been trying to stall proceedings. And this is not something that we are saying. They've been stalling proceedings at the United Nations Security Council on the topic of COVID-19. The United Nations Security Council chief himself has just said that to India today in an exclusive interview. Point number two, under a huge number of sustained allegations that it is fudging data of the COVID-19's impact inside China, the country has now revised its death toll, especially in Wuhan, which has boosted the death toll figure in China up by 40%. That happened just this morning. China has also suppressed Taiwan's emails from way back that actually warned that human-to-human -human transmission of COVID-19 was in fact possible. The WHO ignored those emails under pressure from China because the WHO doesn't recognize Taiwan as a separate state. Geeta Mohan, a foreign affairs editor who conducted that exclusive interview with the United Nations Security Council chief is with me live. Geeta, massive credibility crisis and on top of that a full-blown investigation by the United States into China obfuscating the possibility, not the reality, the possibility that the coronavirus came from a laboratory and not really from a wet market. Well, Shiv, that's the reason why a lot of questions and demands for reforms of the United Nations Security Council. The fact that China can arm twist the whole of March when the world was asking for a discussion at the United Nations Security Council, there wasn't one. And uh, as soon as the uh, Dominican Republic uh, took over presidency, uh, the discussion took place at the United Nations Security Council. And while the world is trying to find out what the origins are, it certainly is a case in point where in uh, the, uh, the, 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 there, there is enough research and enough material to show that it was not a part of the wet markets uh, that the origin of the virus is that uh, it could very well have been man-made. Although we know that the Chinese administration, including the Chinese embassy here in New Delhi, Shiv, has time and again come out and put out statements saying that it is not a man-made yes. virus and that it is a natural virus. We'll have to wait and see what the conclusive evidences are really going to be. But for now, uh, the UNSC finally has discussed the matter and let's see where, where it's headed when it comes to accountability and answerability. Incredibly glaring comment there from the United Nations Security Council chief to Gita saying that China has tried to derail or stop conversations on COVID-19 that were proposed at the United Nations Security Council level. Gita, thank you very much for that. Here's Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.